So welcome back to the Blot Outdoor Show guys. Yes, thank you very much for joining me on another wild camping Wednesday night video. I'm back in the Lake District. You better believe I am. A bit of a last minute plan. I was planning on camping on Wild Boar Fell in the Yorkshire Dales. But as I was driving along the A66, heading towards Bruff, you know where you turn off and head down there. Kirkby Stephen, the winds were unbelievable. I pulled over, I was checking the weather for the wind gusts and all that shite, and it looked like it was going to get worse later on. So, me knowing the Lake District so well, I've always got a couple of backup plans, you know. And I've been up here a couple of times before, that's where I'm going, guys. I'm going to go across Arthur's Pike and onto the next one, which is called Bonskill Pike. Why you bonnie? Like I've said, I've been over here a few times before. Twice I think I've been on Bonskill. But I've never camped on it. But I know once you're on the top, the views are amazing. Down on Old's Water, I'm taking all them views of the mountains in the distance. So it's gonna be a good one, guys. It's gonna be absolutely fantastic old man dingoes, as they say, in the deepest forests of the Congo. I've got some beers. I've got four nice, lovely jubbly beers. I've got some waskies that's been kindly given to me. So stick around for the world famous waski with you. Whew. I'm puffing and panting already. Air matron. Aye. I've got some nice food to cook. Loads of snacks and loads of shite to talk about as usual. You know the score in the Blot Outdoor Show, guys. That's where we're going anyway. So I will bring you legends back when we get further over. Arthur's Pike, and we're heading on to Bonskill Pike. You know it makes total sense. Oh. Okay then my fan sexuals, I've just came down off the summit of Bonscale Pike just to get out the wind. Now it's time to look for a good spot, get the old ten dingo, man dingoes, 
Oh yes, that certainly is the plan, Dingo. And then it'll be time to have a few can dingoes. Oh, oh yes, you better believe it, man, dingoes. I'll bring you back in a Winnie Mandela when I found a good spot. Tricycles. So as you can hear, guys, it's very windy here in this spot. The views are fantastic, but if the wind picks up even more, you know, it could make for an uncomfortable night. But if I drop just down here, in this little gully, look at the difference. Absolutely tremendous. So I can just get my tent down there in that gap. I've still got some views looking over to there. But if I want to get the fantastic views, all I've got to do is take my seat up, sit on there, enjoy your can and just sit and relax. And then when I want to get out the wind, drop down here into this perfect spot. So I think this is where I am going to set up for tonight, Mandingos. I'll bring you legends back when I've got the tent up. Oh, and it's ready for a nice camping go. Right. my fan dingoes time for the first can dingo of this wild camping trip this one is juice forsyth good old brucey bonus oh very nice i used to love bruce forsyth mate in fact bullseye was one of my favorite tv programs my favorite bit was when the bull used to come on mm, you know what i mean guys absolutely class it was that shit it was good if you know what i'm talking about Cheers, man, dingoes. Anyway, however, time to show you my setup for tonight. As you already know, I'm in the Berghaus, Berghaus, Cairngorm, two-man tent. First, I'll show you the drinks. I've had this kindly given to me from a lovely couple by the name of James and Laura. White... Oh, forgetting the proper name for it. White something, I'll tell you later on when we we'll do the review. Temperance Club 61.6 placenta, the old placenta, and the famous words of Cowboy Chris. Yeah, they came to the Doxy Lad. They were having a couple of nights away in a B and B, I think it was in Hartlepool, and they came up the Doxy Lad and they also give us four of these different different waskies that's from their own collection i don't normally accept whiskies or any drinks off people if the if the top if the seal's been broke if you know what i'm talking about but james and laura they've sent me whiskies up a few times so i fully trust them if you know what i'm talking about guys i'm not expecting that the poisoners or anything if you're watching james and laura thank you very much it was lovely talking to you the other day you're a lovely couple i so and they've also give us some more whiskey that's at home which i'll review on another day so yeah i've got that nice temperance club there's another name for it i forget and white something temperance club i'll remember later on we will ding dang do a review on that james and laura they're like they're really into the whiskies they go around distilleries all over the uk and they're, they're like members in these different whiskey clubs and this is like a very rare one to get hold of so i'm very fortunate to have this you better believe i am right drinks i have also got a mcguigan the old barry mcguigan red wine barry mcguigan black and once you've had black there's no going back you know what i'm talking about ladies you know exactly what this man dingo is talking about i've got the juice forsyth can dingo there i've also got from the north brewing company open space from northern spunk sorry guys slip of the tongue i mean northern monk 
I've got faith, the old faith, the faith, the faith, and the famous words of Boy George. And from Salt, I've got Hooker Bark. I don't know if I'm saying this right. Neeper, Neeper, whatever. Salt, Hooker Bark. That'll ding dang do for me. Yes, I think that's it for drinks. I've got a couple of bottles of water there. Um, a couple of Jurgen Cloffies, good old caramel cappadingos. For my main meal tonight, I've got these. Four pork, red Leicester, cheese and jalapeno, jalapeno, hot dogs. You can't boil them like hot dogs. I've got to put them in the old pansexual, the old pansexuality. Yes, and cook them like a normal sausage, if you know what I'm talking about, guys. I think I'll have three, and I'll keep one for Inzy Morgan. I've got some diced onion. We've got some sweet chilli sauce. And I've got the bundingos in there, like the hot dog bundingos. So, yeah, a sausage supper and a sausage breakfast. And for my snacks, I've got sliced sausage, sliced German sausage. I have got two pepperami hot and spicy sausage sticks I have got a caramelised onion and pork scotch egg so that's like sausage meat on there it's a right sausage fest tonight Mrs Block would love this camp she is fond she is partial to a bit sausage if you know what I'm talking about guys the other snacks I've got is twin snakes browns biltong the traditional flavour link in the description guys for browns biltong and I've also got some biscuits just to nibble on later on. Some nice biscuits. Two seconds. What? Wait, what's your problem? Hey mate, I'm, I'm, I'm sick of year. It's year again. Sorry guys. What's your problem like? Look, okay, if I want to call him nice, I'll call him nice. No. Right, fair enough then. They called nice. I didn't give a shit. I'm going to call him nice. Yeah, and bugger off. Do you know what I mean? It's him again. It's that prick again. He's following me all over. Mate, I'm telling you. On your bike. I want to call them nice. Okay, see you later. I'm getting fed up in mind. I am getting absolutely fed up. It's that same arsehole. Every time I talk about these, he pops his head up. They're not called nice. They're called nice. Do you know what I mean? That's it. Right. That's that's ruined the start of this camp. I'm going to chill out now, guys. Next time he comes up and says that, I'm telling you what, he's going to get one of them. Right, guys. Cheers. I'm going to finish the rest of my can off. I'm going to chill myself out. I'll bring your legends back. When I'm chilled out, I'm in a, I'm in a better mood. A couple of shots of Waski will sort me out. You better believe it will. Rice. <laughs> well, guys, just had an absolute nightmare. There was a guy, <laughs> there was a bloke running past, jogging, a fell runner. And he's running up that way and his dogs came here and it stuck his head through there, grabbed me buns and eaten me buns off me sausages. <laughs> so he nearly had me onions away as well. Oh my god. So it doesn't look like I'm having sausage sarnies tonight. But it looks like I'm still have I can still have sausage and onions. <laughs> Unbelievable. <sighs> he didn't get me whiskey though, did he? He didn't get me whiskey, so there you go, mandingos. <laughs> Rice. It is absolutely freezing, Mandingos. Oh, I forgot to show you inside my tent earlier on. I got the foil mat down. Unigear sleeping pad. Four season OEX sleeping bag. I've got my down trousers and down slippers in there. I've already put two down jackets on. Oh. 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 This is 
is a first on the Blood Outdoor Show, guys. I've been given these heated gloves. I'll show you later on when I put them on. I've had them a while, but I keep forgetting to bring them out. You basically just click the button and it lights up. I need to attach the wire to the battery. If you know what I'm talking about, guys, yeah, but some heated gloves that is going to keep my fingers nice and warm because they are starting to get bitly cold. If you know what I'm talking about, Baghdad's down the bottom, guys. Luckily, this tent has a decent height to it, so I've put my seat in there, which is allowing me to sit underneath, stopping the breeze from getting us. But it, it's freezing. Oh, it was such a nice day earlier on, but since that sun's gone down, it is absolutely chicken madras. If you know what I'm talking about, guys. Oh, yes. But this is the life, and this is the way. The way of the Mandingo. I'm now drinking open space. Quite fitting, considering my out camping and open space. <sighs> yes. The difference it makes just sitting in here compared to sitting out there. Unbelievable is the sea in the south of France. Cheese mandingos. <laughs> okay. I'm going to try and get a little bit more food taj, the old Nicky Minaj, before it's pitch black. And when I bring you legends back, I'll be sitting here relaxing with a nice little waski and we'll answer a question and talk some shite. Oh yes, tonight is going to be a good night. You better believe it is. Rice. Oh yes, my pansexualities, this is the life, absolutely unbelievable. I've had to come in the tent because it's very chilly. You would think now that it's April, it'll be starting to get warmer. I mean, it was warm early on, the sun was up, it was nice and bright, but once that sun's gone down, it's really chilly on the old stumpy willy. If you know what I'm talking about, mandingos, I am just enjoying a nice little chest warmer. Oh, and I've got another one down there as well, can you see? I've got four of these from James and Laura's personal Waski collection. The old collection. Cheers, James and Laura. I'm not doing a review on any of these little samples. They were just kindly given to me for me to enjoy when I'm sitting chilling, like what I'm doing now. Having me crap on with you absolute legends of subscribers. <laughs> Just sitting in the tent makes a massive difference with the temperature. I know I've got the door wide open, so I'm getting that cold breeze coming in. But if you go and sit outside for five minutes, my hands is freezing, my toes is freezing, oh, my nose is getting cold. I'm just lying here. It's a massive difference, an absolute massive difference. And I can see out there, I can see the top of the hill. You've got the light off the old moonshine, lighting the sky up. So it's class, man, absolutely class. I haven't had much to drink and I'm talking shite already. So stick around guys for loads more shite talking coming soon. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Oh yes. Should we answer a little question? Why? Why I've got you here? While I've got your attention, I might as well answer a little question. Now, I don't mean to sound like a knobhead seeing this. This is just a question that's been asked of a few people, so it sounds ridiculous, I know, but I'm only answering a question. And the question is, if I ever got the opportunity to be on TV, there you go. I know how ridiculous that sounds. An ugly bugger like me with a big fat hairy spotty arse, a wonky smile, yellow teeth, pod belly, <laughs> a fierce dog wouldn't lick. But I, if I ever got the chance to go on TV, on God knows what, I don't know, what, what kind of programme would an idiot like me get invited on if the channel got absolutely massive? 
Not that it's ever going to get massive. I'm just talking hypothetically. I don't know. You tell me in the comment section. Would I take the opportunity to go on TV if I got that opportunity? So this is not me saying that. I think that is absolutely ridiculous. Because, I mean, my channel is still only little. I know it's got like 60,000 subscribers, but that's snout. That is absolutely snout. If you know what I'm talking about, guys, there's people out there with hundreds of thousands, a million, two million, ten million thousand subscribers. My channel is just in the early stages of doing well. But um, I'm going to answer the question anyway, because there's a few people ask me it. Would I go on TV if I got offered that opportunity? No, I wouldn't. So hold me to that man, Dingoes. If my channel, for whatever reason, if I do get lucky and I do start to do really well, you can hold me to that comment. And I'm a man of my word. You better believe I am. No, I will not be going on TV. Like, by that I mean you're invited onto a programme. Oh, pardon, see? It's just not for me. I like doing what I do. I'm in total control. <coughs> videoing editing and I just I'm just a boring guy <laughs> like apart from camping <coughs> all I am is a family man and I walk around Sainsbury's and Morrison's and IK with my wife <coughs> and I go and see my mum and dad who were in the 70s and I take the dogs for a walk and this is like this, what I'm doing now, is like life in the fast lane for this man, Dingo. So, I don't see, I don't see no need to do anything like that. I've been very fortunate. This, what I'm doing, has enabled me to leave the factory. So, for me, I'm already ahead of anything I ever expected to ever do. And, that's not for me, like, it's not for me. Some people wouldn't know how quick to jump at the chance, they'd be showing themselves all over Facebook and they'd be giving it the big one. You know the type of people, guys, you know. You, and they have the five minutes of fame, don't they? And you, they can reach that height and then they just drop off the edge and you never see them again. Ah, oh, I can't be arsed with any of that shite. I just want to come out camping. And if you guys like watching the videos, I am absolutely over the moon with that. You get the odd person that might say, oh, I don't like the videos anymore. Why? Hey, why? Fair enough. Go away. If you want to come back, feel free to come back and watch any time you want. No hard feelings. But I, this is what I'm comfortable with doing. Just being out camping. Cheese man, dingoes. Mm. Let's get the other one. Rice. Right. Ooh, that one's nice. Arbaloa. Arbaloa. Very nice indeed. I, I'm quite happy just doing what I'm doing. This for me is life in the fast lane. I've got no intentions in seeking bloody hell. Fame and fortune and shite like that. If I can make enough money off YouTube to pay the wage I was getting at the factory, pay me bills, have a few little holidays with Mrs. Blot and my son Preston and the dogs in the Lake District, and buy some new socks and underpants. <laughs> That'll ding dang do for this man, Dingo. So, yeah, you will see nothing like that with me. Hold me to my word, man, Dingoes. Because I'm telling you, I'm not interested in any of that kind of shite. There you go, guys. That's that question answered. I probably didn't answer it very well. I didn't plan where I was going to see it. You know the score in the blood outdoor show. I just open my mouth and talk a load of shite. Right. Cheers.
Ooh. Boy, it smells cute. Alrighty folks, 10.30 at night, I'm just sitting chilling, absolutely loving life, you cannot whack it, it's now time for a bottle of red wine, just to add a little bit of sophistication, sophistication to the Blood Outdoor Show, you better believe it guys, I've got a nice little bottle of Barry McGuigan, Black Label Wed Wine, Oh yes, and like I said earlier on ladies, you know what I'm talking about, once you've had black, there certainly is no going back, you better believe there's not. Cheers, my man friend and woman friend Dingo's rights. Ooh. It's the spot, Champione, fantastic or man Dingo's is the seer in the deepest depths of the Amazon rainforest. <laughs> I just made that one up there. <laughs> that just shows I talk a load of shy don't I? <laughs> I just I got stuck for a second and just some absolute shite came out of my mouth. But that is not a bad little drop. It's a little bit better than the Aldi red wine that I normally have. Barry McGuigan from Morrison's, two pound fifty a bottle. Oh I don't even know what we're gonna talk about now. I've just pressed record, picked the wine up, and um, I'm just trusting my silver tongue, <laughs> silverback, the old silverback gorilla. <laughs> what the hell's going on here? <laughs> Cheers, man, dingoes. I'm just trusting my silver tongue, the old silverback gorilla, and seeing what comes out when I start talking. Well, I might as well answer another question. I'm losing the plot. Right, what question have we got? Well, I was just reading a couple earlier on. I've just been looking at my phone about 25 winner to go. The old 25 Winnie Mandela's and Nail to Darkers. And I noticed a couple of people asking, am I missing the factory since I left? I think this is the sixth week I've been gone now, so I've already had five whole weeks away from the factory, and this is my sixth week, sixth or seventh week. Am I missing the factory? Am I missing the lads, the crack, the band on the shop floor? As you can tell, guys, of watching my videos, it doesn't take you much to work out that I was one of the main idiots in the factory for having a laugh and a joke and a practical joke, and um, yeah. <laughs> if you've worked in factories, guys, building sites in any type of environment like that with a load of silly man dingoes you know the type of crack that goes on don't you and I was one of the the top idiots I should say I don't want to see something that's going to get us in trouble me cowboy Chris yeah he's worse than me you know you know cowboy Chris his channel's called Bonnie Lad Adventures he was like idiot number one I'm like idiot number two. If you, if you think I'm a, a madman, Cowboy Chris, Bonnie Lad Adventures, he is absolutely bonkers. Check out his channel. I'll leave a link in the description of this video. Bonnie Lad Adventures, Cowboy Chris. His last uh, stealth camp he done was a cracker. He was like camping, like up a bridge, but like underneath it, 20, 30 foot up. Like literally, if he fell asleep and rolled over, Ooh, his title said um, he could fall to death. I don't know about that, but I'll tell you what, he could break his arm or his leg. See, in that mind, you could break your neck. So, yeah, maybe you could fall to your death. And then um, my good friend, Young Chris, his challenge called Yaka Travels. He'd done a camp a couple of weeks ago, 
down next to the transporter bridge in Middlesbrough. Well, I think he was on like the other side of the water to Middlesbrough. Is that like the Hartlepool side? I don't know. But like, he was in Teesside, you know what I mean? Next to the transporter bridge it was his first stealth camp. Crackling video, so a yakka travels for young Chris. I'll put that in the description as well. What was the question I was going to answer? I'm just, I'm trying to big me mates up that much because that's the type of guy I am. Um, aye, am I missing the factory? Well, it's yes and no, as they say in the doodang. I am missing the crack with the lads, of course I am. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I kind of just sit round the house shouting, Hey mate, why are you fucking... Sorry for the language. Hey mate, why are you good looking? I kind of keep shouting out Mrs. Blood all the time, or neighbours walking past in the street. Saying that, man, that's a good idea. That could make for like extra video, couldn't I? For the channel. Or you know, like them shorts videos. Empty bedroom window, just random people walking past. Hey, mate. Hey, mate. Why are you good looking? Do you know what I mean? No, seriously though. I do miss the crap with the lads. It's a right, it was a right good laugh. But, I wouldn't be out doing this now. So, it's yes and no. If you know what I'm talking about, guys. The crack was absolutely brutal, absolutely unreal. But them was just little moments that like stand out. If you get down to the reality of it, it's factory work, it's long, it's hard, it's hard graft. 99% of the time, you're as sick as a dog. And then um, you get the little moments now and again that are a good laugh. So, <laughs> I love all the lads I used to work with, you know. Um, there's, I'm not like, I haven't like left the factory and I'm thinking, yeah, I missed the big shot, if you know what I mean. I get where they are. It's it's one of them things. If I didn't get lucky with the factory, I wouldn't have left because I enjoyed working there. As far as jobs go, do you know what I mean? I enjoyed having a laugh with the lads and talking shite and playing practical jokes. But I do miss the crack but I don't miss the job. That's what I'm trying to say, guys. I don't miss the job at all. Why would I miss work in the factory when I'm, I've been, I'm fortunate enough to do this? Sitting here, talking to you legends, talking absolute load of shite, <laughs> pressing record and just waffling on with nothing scripted, nothing planned. You know the score on the Blackout Door Show, having a nice Barry McGuigan, once you've had black, there's no going back, er, matron. Yeah. But I do miss the crap with the lads. Especially little Mick, young Chris, cowboy Chris, my best friend in the factory, Robbie Bird, the bird man from Brazil. I've mentioned two or three times before. Robbie, if you're watching, I love you, mate. Absolute legend. Another good mate, Joe Boggs. Joe Boggs, mate. I love you. Honestly. I've worked with an absolutely fantastic bunch of lads. Dobby, Brandon, <laughs> tremendous, mint lads, all the lads around my section. Obviously in our little Mick works there, I've mentioned little Mick. He is an absolute legend of the factory. And he's a legend on the Blood Outdoor Show. Hopefully Mick is going to join me next week or the week after. I don't know whether it's going to be a wild camp or a stealth camp. But it doesn't matter because it's always a good laugh when Mick comes out. So yeah guys. I'm going to sit back now, I'm going to lie back there, I'm going to enjoy me, once you've had black, there's no going back, Barry McGuigan, red wine, <laughs> I hope that's answered that question, God I don't half waffle under her, I could have just, I quickly answered it, couldn't I, and said, oh yeah, I miss it, blah de blah, but that's not the way it goes here on the Blood Door Show guys, okay then, I'll bring you back, in a few little nail to darkers when I think of some more shite to talk about. Rice.
nice. Not nice. Nice. <laughs> oh yes. I've had to come in the tent properly now. I've shut the door. It is absolutely Baltic outside. I can't believe how cold it is. Luckily guys, as never mentioned before in the Brotto Dodge Show, I've got some heated gloves, so I think I'm going to get them on very soon. I was meaning to tell you about them a while ago, but I keep forgetting, so yeah, Uroro, heated gloves, I will put them on when I press stop on the old camaraderie. Oh, the wind's picking up. Hmm. Waski with you, coming very soon. Hmm. Five year old temperance club. 61.6 placenta. Woohoo! I can feel a bad head coming on in the Morgan Mandingos. But it'll warm the old chest around you up. And you've got to do a world famous with you on the Blood Outdoor Show. I've still got a little bit beer left, I didn't even realise I had it in that pocket there. It was like there on an angle. Lucky it didn't spill. It would have gotten underneath me bed and everything. Not quite half a can. I totally forget about it. I got that feeling of, you know when you put a jacket on or a tracky top and you haven't had it on for weeks and you put it on, you put your hand in your pocket and you find a five pound note or a 10 pound note. I got that kind of feeling, I like looked and I was like, Oh yes, <laughs> half a can dingo. You know when you think you're all out of drinks. Class, I knew I had a little bit of whiskey but I was keeping that for the wee view. Result, rice. Oh yes man dingoes. Right, I'll bring you back in a Winnie Mandela for the world famous Waski review. You better believe I will, Licicles. Oh. <laughs> oh, made one. It's the glove of self love. <laughs> oh yes Mandingos, you know what time it is, Waski time, and this is what we've got this week, from Derbyshire, an English distillery, White Peak Temperance, five year old, kindly given to me from a couple of legends by the name of James and Laura, they're in the Whiskey Club, the Temperance Club, they pay money to be in that club and every year they get a waski sent out. This waski, like the one year old one, the two year old one, all the way up to ten year old. This is the five year old version. It's a proper size bottle of waski that gets sent out. You can't normally get your hands on a smaller bottle, but they managed to get a rare bottle of this miniature Temperance Club waski. 61.6% and they were so kind to send it 
to this mandingo so I'm just the guy to check this out and tell you exactly what I think about it and let's get it popped in the old famous cub dingo mandingos oh yes this is just what I need on a really cold night to warm the old Chester Rooney up let's get the old Schnecker Rubel in oh like a nice toasty oaky smell almost like a chard like a burnt wood thing going on let's swirl around there see if I can get some sniff dingoes up the old Nostradamus if you know what I'm talking about I'm not getting no I'm not getting no fruity elements to it like I do with a lot of waskies. It's more of like a a wood oaky burntness but it's nice it's like a nice aroma maybe a little bit charcoal And a little bit of a licorice thing there. Anyway, that's enough of the sniffing. Let's get on with it, tasting tricycles. Ho 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 ho! Ba 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 ho! <whistles> Strong! That will certainly blow your cap off. Woo! I've been drinking whiskey now. God, I'm 46 and I've been drinking whiskey since I was still at school. Me grander on the sly, me grander sass. Used to give us a cheeky waski when I was full of cold, when I was full of man flu or boy flu, you know what I mean? I hot whiskey, boiling hot water, waski, a little bit sugar or honey if you're a posh. I've been getting that since I was a kid, so I got the taste of whiskey. So yeah, I've been drinking whiskey like thirty years. You know what I mean, guys? And that, whoo, Temperance Club. Oh, that is probably the strongest whiskey I've ever had, and you can feel it straight away. No mucking about. I'm just getting the old grassy ass off the side of the famous Cub Dingo. Let's have another taste, guys. Oh, it's very nice though. Oh Lord, strong, and it's blowing your cap off. There's just something about it, and I can't put my finger on it. Oh, luckily, I've got a good old measure in there, so I've got time to take my time and take the old flavour dingoes in. Oh, I said in the smell. Maybe a little bit licorice. And I'm not going to big myself up. But I'm bang on there. Like I'm bang on. Because it was only slight in the smell. Now I've had two or three tastes. For me. Oh. Woo -hoo. There's a massive. Alcoholic. Licorice flavour. Coming through there. With. Oak. Oh, there's definite wood thing there. Oh, yes, it's a rich, oaky flavour with licorice. No fruitness about it at all, like I say with a lot of waskies. Oh, my goodness. Well, at this moment in time now, I don't know whether to tell you it's amazing or just really good. It's definitely really good. I'm really enjoying it. Can you hear that? Oh, pardon, ski. The sound of the wind outside. It's getting wilder. The old Jane Wilder. 
<laughs> Let's have another taste, guys. I tell you what, although it's strong and it's got a punch to it, you can tell it's quality because there's nothing harsh about it at all. Oh, yeah. Now, if you like licorice, like I do, once again, talking about me grander, giving the cheeky waski, it's the kind of confectionery he would have, it's the kind of sweet he would have, licorice, and I would always pinch a, a bit of licorice off me grander, or his cough sweets and shit like that, but it's got a big, strong licorice flavour. For me, I might be totally wrong, and this is going to prove that I'm not full of shit because I'm going to say something totally wrong. So if you read up on the website, I'm pretty sure if you can go on their website and read up what it says, it's going to say a completely different thing than what I'm saying. So that's a good thing. That's a good thing if I'm saying something different than what their website's saying. So it looks like I haven't copied, which I don't, by the way. I think you guys know that. I'll just say what I think. Most of the time, I'm probably talking you shite. I just say what I think at this very moment as I'm recording live, if you know what I'm talking about. So, yeah, forgetting about what the online things is, I'm getting. As well as the oak, as well as the licorice, I'm getting like a wine taste. Like a lovely, oh, you know when you go all inclusive in Spain, Benidorm for example, and you're in the all inclusive restaurant and you've got the free tap for the wine, for the white wine, for the red wine, and the red wine's a little bit harsh, but you still drink it because it's free. Not that this is harsh, this is nice, but that red wine taste, you get that free Benadom there. That's how you know I'm telling the truth. There's no way this is going to be on that website. That all inclusive Benadom or Salou, you know what I mean? Or Bella Medina, all inclusive, free, all inclusive red wine that you can pull yourself. Oh, not the greatest red wine. I feel like that's mixed in with there, but it's a nice mix, so it's not making this wasky any worse. Oaky, licorice, Benadom, wed wine with Wayne Wooney. Cheers, guys, down the hatch. What am I talking about? Mm. There you go. <laughs> Thank you to James and Laura for that. Five euro temperance club waski 61.6 percent then i've really enjoyed that mind i'm gonna give that a big fat mega 9.4 out of 10 dingo man dingoes oh yes you better believe i am and you know what i'm talking about this is serious wild coming right Oh yes, man, dingoes. It's late. <laughs> it's quarter two in the morning. Oh yes, you better believe it is. It's time to get some shut eye. It's been absolutely fantastic while camp. What a place to spend the night. Oh yes, unbelievable is the sea in the southeastern region of Mongolia. You better believe the do, man, and goes, okay, I'm now gonna say a bonjour and good night, Vienna. I'll see you absolute legends, first thing in the morning. A coffee time. Yeah. Good morning, man, and goes, nine o'clock. Ah, it was cold during the night. <laughs> I didn't put me down trousers and me down slippers on, and I tell you what, when I woke up in the early hours of Zimorgan, I could feel the cold coming through. 
on my feet and my legs. Oh. <laughs> but I'm up now, nice and fresh, bursting for a slash garden. So I, right, I'm gonna pop out, get a quick pee, get some breakfast on. <laughs> when I said good night to you last night, just before that, I was fast asleep. <laughs> I crashed out because I was just lying inside my tent. I had the door open there on the vestibule. I had my legs out there. And I was just relaxing with the breeze coming in. I fell fast asleep. And then I, when I woke up, that's when I said, right guys, I'm gonna get some sleep now. <laughs> I'd literally just been asleep. And I forgot all about cooking my food. <laughs> But that's all right, means I've got a nice breakfast to cook. No buns, I've got no buns. Because <coughs> that dog ate them. But I'm gonna chop the sausages up, in with the diced onions, some sweet chili sauce. That sounds like a decent breakfast for this mandingo. Right then guys, I'm gonna get a quick slash Gordon and bring you back in a minute. Sausage and onions. And we'll get some chili sauce in. Time to have my little breakfast before we pack up and get out of Dodge City. <laughs> it looks all right, like. <coughs> Chopped up sausages. I had like jalapenos, cheese, pork sausages, all mixed together. I've got onions in there and sweet chili sauce. I thought I heard like the noise of it, um, Bike, you know, like a cord or something. Might be Farmer Giles. Oh. Not bad. Not bad at all. Mm. It's nice and hot. That's the main thing. Making sure the coop in the middle look fine. Mm. Mm. Not bad at all, mandingos. This pan's going to take some cleaning though when I get home. Mm. Helicopter. And you want to hear something? Yeah, the old pansexual. The old pansexual. I'll have to put this in the bin diesel with me rubbish. I'm not putting it in my bag. It'll be sweet chilli sauce all over. Mm. Oh yes. That's what I'm talking about, man, and <sighs> <laughs> 
I can't believe I fell asleep last night and forgot to cook. But it's left me with a nice breakfast. I fell asleep, woke up, said good night, and then went back to sleep again. I was just that relaxed. Even though it was cold, I was just lying relaxing with the door open there behind the camera and just drifted off to the sound of the wind. Brilliant. The whiskies and the cans help you fall asleep as well, like. <laughs> okay, the man goes, I'm going to eat the rest of this in peace. When I bring you back, I'll have the tent tucked down and we'll, get, we'll be getting out of Dodge. <laughs> right. Okay, then my pansexualities, that's me all packed away. Baghdad and Bin Diesel with all my shite. I've also put the, the pansexual in there. The old pansexual. Yeah, I've had to chuck that in there because it's got sweet chilli sauce all over. And I don't want to get any bag of mess, if you know what I'm talking about. That's where I had the tent, guys, as you can see. Down there. All me shite in the bag, leave no trace, and all that carry on. One last look at the views, guys, before we hit the street. Oh, it's very windy when you get up here. Get moving. See you, legends. Back down in the bottom of it. Nice. All right, mate. Well, folks, that's it. That's the end of this week's Wednesday night wild camping video. Hope you've enjoyed it. I've had an absolutely brilliant time as usual. What a fantastic place for a wild camp. Unbelievable. <laughs> Class. Well, Mandingos, please join me on my next video, which will be another takeaway with you on Friday. And join me on Sunday night for another stealth camp where I was camping right next to a busy railway line. You better believe it. Oh, the car is in sight and I'm dying for a shite. <laughs> See you later, man, dingoes. Give us a thumbs up and leave a comment. You know it makes sense. Right. Oh, animation. You know, it's my turtle since my very nice.